Most startups fail. We hear it all the time. And they do because most entrepreneurs jump headfirst into unknown waters. Do you want to be the exception? Then stick around to learn how. Welcome, I'm Michi Dries, content director and co-founder at My CTO Friend, where founders come to learn how to build their tech startup. Our company has guided and coached more than 200 startups in just the last few years, and today we're bringing that knowledge and experience directly to you. In today's episode, we're talking about what entrepreneurs usually do wrong, and we're starting with our very own CEO, Amari Khalifi. We want to share his story. Back in 2010, he created his very own first startup his first venture. He had a great concept, but unfortunately he made lots of mistakes. Um, one of them being the main focus. He focused mainly on building the product. And this is a mistake that most entrepreneurs really make. They are eager to have the product, to have the thing to sell. But this approach, this methodology of once you have something to sell, you can worry about selling it. It's not the right approach for a startup. Um, a startup is something that's very flexible, that changes a lot. You need to be ready to pivot and to change your business model or your features based on what your market is actually telling you. This is something that Amari unfortunately didn't do. He worked really hard into developing something that actually worked well, but it wasn't specific to the user's needs. Okay, you need the user, you need their feedback to understand what you're actually going to develop. And once you have that, you're going to guarantee to some extent a market fit. Now, this is just one of the things that could go wrong. One example. Now, there's a few things that you might want to avoid when getting started. Now, the first thing is don't write a long business plan. If you don't know what you're getting into, don't try to anticipate every single thing. Same thing goes with coding or hiring an engineer. Once you start coding, once you start doing your own code, that's something that's going to be fixed to some extent, okay? It's something that you're investing in and it's going to be a lot harder or it's gonna make less sense to change it afterwards. So you don't wanna start with something that's going to be fixed until you have all the information that you need. The same goes for searching for a technical solution, designing all the screens and well, at the last but not least, at the very end, developing the whole concept on your own. This is also one of the mistakes that Amari made. Uh, he had a very clear idea on his head, but he didn't speak to too many people about it um, or many people that would use the thing at the end. So that's what happened. Now, I understand that there's lots of entrepreneurs that are afraid to share secrets about their project, right? Afraid that someone else is going to steal it. Uh, but... If that's the case, if you are afraid of sharing your concept, then don't talk about the solution. Talk about the problems, okay? In any case, the idea is for you to begin somewhere, not only to begin gathering information for your market understanding, but also getting the word out that you're actually interested in this problem and in providing a solution, okay? So that's the very first step that I want to share with you is start from your user's problem, not from your solution, okay? Get all the information that you can. Understand why this is a problem for those people. What aspects of this problem are worse and what are eh, okay. Um, this will help you prioritize as well your own solution and help you with step number two, identify what will make the difference. What will take a prospective customer into an actual paying customer? If you solve a, B, C, and D in your ideal product, then that's awesome. But at the very beginning, you need to understand that only one of those is going to happen, okay? You need to know from A, B, C, or D, A, B, C, or D being aspects of the problem, what's the most important for your prospective user? Maybe if you solve B, 75% of your prospective users will say, yes, please take me. I need someone to fix this problem for me but maybe they're not that interested in C or D. They, they're just nice to have. So num number two, step number two is all about understanding the priorities of your customer within this issue and within the solution that they would like to have. Number three is 
Don't start with an MVP or a minimal viable product. Start with an MVB, a minimum viable brand. Reputation comes with communication and gathering all this information from your market um, is going to help you interact with these people. As you interact, you want to make sure that you have some brand, some values, some knowledge, some understanding that's going to be associated with you. And that means that once you actually create an MVP later on, uh, it's going to make sense. It's all going to click together. And it's not just talking about the problems anymore, but actually providing a solution. Start with a minimum viable brand. Step number four, build a fan base. And no, I'm not suggesting that you become a celebrity overnight and that you're getting stalkers all around you. No, I'm talking about a fan base for the values and the knowledge that you share around the problem, okay? Not for your product, okay? Keep in mind, not for your product because you don't have a product yet, nor should you have a product yet, okay? Remember, the product needs to be developed with the prospective users. So in order to do that, you need to gather around those users and maybe once you gather them around, they're gonna help you create the the product and you're gonna have a better product for it. Now. If you're able to describe the problem better than your client, they're going to trust you, okay? So in order to build a fan base, you you have to write inspiring messages, share tips, share stories, make sure that you're helping them understand the problem that you're going to tackle, okay? Number five is very closely related to number four and is communicate to people in a way that helps you become known, liked, and trusted by them, okay? This is a well-known marketing principle. They need to know, like, and trust you. So any communication, any piece of content or post or email that you share with them should serve either one of these purposes or at the very best, all three, okay? It needs to teach you something. It needs to be entertaining or it needs to be inspiring. If you can inspire, entertain, and educate them all at the same time, you're hitting the mark, okay? That's exactly what you wanna do. Now, last but not least, um, and this is because people are quite a skeptic and they should, there's a lot of stuff out there in the internet that's not necessarily legit. Um, use storytelling. You want to make sure that Everything you provide, all the proof, all the knowledge, all the evidence has some story behind it because it acts as proof, okay? Um, The story at the very beginning, that's Amari's very own story. Our very own CEO already lived through this. And that was the very first reason why my CTO friend kind of became a thing, right? That's storytelling. If you have a story to back up your knowledge or to back up your experiences, it's going to help you prove to people that they should hear you and that you do have something to say that's worth hearing. Now, conclusion, make sure that you build your solution with the people that will use it, not alone. Don't do this in your room with a notebook or with your camera with no one around to ask. Do this with the people who will use it, okay? And number two, make sure you use storytelling to gather that initial fan base. You need to gather a lot of people, as many people as you can with this problem. And storytelling is a great tool to actually get it done, okay? Don't worry about the technical part. It will come, okay? Once you understand your users' needs and they're well-defined, you will find a way to build exactly what your product needs. But you have to clarify first what to create before actually searching for a technical solution, okay? Make sure you do that. So that's all for today. If you enjoyed learning with us and want to see more, consider subscribing, help us spread the word by hitting the like button and by sharing with your entrepreneur friends. If you have any questions or want to suggest a topic, feel free to comment down below or you can also check out our website to learn more about our coaching program and how you can join. Till next time.